What's up, YouTube? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barn on 11970. Thank you, as always, for checking out my video. You are always welcome here, and I appreciate that. All right, for those of you who have been following my channel for a while, I've probably noticed some changes. One, in the videos that I make, and two, the kind of personality and the, the way I'm speaking and the way I handle things. Things I've learned over the years is um, if you use your heart and you open your mind and expand it to possibilities, you grow. You expand. You start to understand things better. And if you've you've been following me long enough to know my old channel, Barn on 11967, back then when I first got all this information, it's very overwhelming. It uh, makes you angry, makes you paranoid, makes you scared. You see all different possibilities. You don't know where to go. It's basically like somebody kidnapping you, putting a sheet over your head, dropping you in the middle of nowhere and saying, okay, find your way home. And you have no clue where you are. You're in the middle of a woods somewhere and you're lost. That's kind of what the experience is like. But after a while, you start getting used to things. You start knowing where to go. You start trusting your instincts. And eventually you start getting to the point where your mind expands and you rise above. Now, the last couple of videos I've been making, I've been talking about the deceit. There's a deception in this world to, to control us. And the reason that they do what they do is because they've pretty much mastered how to control people. Because if you think about, for example, governments and, and religious, the religious people, and now I'm talking about the leaders like the Vatican and the churches and all that, they tend to tell us how to regulate ourselves. But the very things they use as fear to control us, we notice they don't do themselves. I mean, prime example, you'll have the church tell you, well, if you are gay, for example, you'll go to hell. But yet, how many reports have there been over the years of priests being caught having sex with young boys? I know these things are hard to understand and grasp because they want programming is done since you're a child and they use divide and conquer to control the people through self-regulation. Because if you think of it from an enemy standpoint, and I've always said this, think from an enemy's point, if you're in control, you don't want people to know the truth. Well, if you imprison them, and enforce soldiers on them. As you see in Ferguson, people will fight back. So you can't do that. The best way to get people to follow what you want is to make them believe it to the point where they will regulate themselves and others. And the whole divide and conquer thing with religion, with color of your skin, sexual preference, wherever country you're coming from, in other words, patriotism, we all have to understand, like if you saw in my last video, when we come into this realm, this third dimensional realm, we all come in the same way. We are all single-celled organisms. We start out as this, an embryo that gets fertilized. doesn't matter if you're, you're Chinese or Russian or American or African, or Scottish, or Swedish. It's all the same. It doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, black or white, Republican or Democrat, Jew or Catholic. We all start out the same. But when we are born, we're automatically put into labels. Well, this person was born in this location in this time, so he's this type of religion. Or he's born in America, so he's an American. Born in China, he's a China person, a Chinaman. Or Chinese, whatever. So, basically, everything that you're taught and everything you're meant to believe in is basically based on a roll of the dice. Because if you were born a thousand years ago, you probably wouldn't be thinking the same way you, have to, you are today. If you were born in Nigeria, you'd probably have a different point of view of the world. So 
It's kind of potluck if you think about it. And everything that we know, we've been taught. Now, there will be people that make the argument, and this is a good argument to make. Well, aren't the things you're talking about the same thing being told? Here's the difference. The things that I've sought out have not been people coming to me and saying, this is the way it is, this is what you have to believe, forcing it on me like an agenda, like they do in the education system, like they do in religion. They come to you and they make you, they make you believe by saying, this is the way it is. They do it on TV, they do it in politics, they do it in religion. As you rise above, you search out things and you go with what you feel. And the difference between the two is like, for example, there are people I listen to. There are people like um, Bill Donahue, Santos Bonacci, scientists like Greg Braden and Nassim Harasim. I forget how his name is pronounced. Um, Max Egan or Eigen. People like that. And what people have to understand is that the choice is there. It's all about choice. They're not talking about this is what you must do. They don't talk about the fear. They talk about love. They talk about knowledge and wisdom and seeking out for yourself. They're not saying either you believe what we say or you're going to die or you're going to go to hell. And you notice the education system, our governments, our religions, it's all fear-based and it's all punishment-based. In other words, believe what we tell you or do what you're told, otherwise you're going to be punished. In other words, in government, if you don't pay your taxes, we're going to take your money from you. If you don't follow our rules that we ourselves don't really follow ourselves, well, we'll put you in jail. And religion, follow our laws or you'll eternally suffer in hell. Even though we know numerous times the church has been corrupted. And when you understand where you come from, that we are light beings. Because like I said, if you, all you have to do is read Genesis in the Bible. They say God is the light of the world and we are made in God's image. We all come from one. And if you know anything about the speed of light at 186,400 miles per second, it gives the illusion of being everywhere. I mean, look at a movie. If you see a movie, a movie I think is approximately 24 frames per second. Okay. Let's even look at a video game. Everybody talks about these new video games. Oh, they're 60 frames per second. That means in one second, you, there are 60 images. And you see how smooth that looks. Well, just imagine 186,400 frames per second. The speed of light goes faster than your eyes can visualize. So light, which everything is made of, because everything's made of atoms, it's nothing more than an illusion of solid. Because like, for example, and I'm going to be all over the place in this video, but you're going to learn a lot if you listen to the whole thing. If you have an empty room, it's first of all not really empty. <clears throat> you just can't see most of the things in the universe because universally speaking, we're pretty much blind. You can't see ultraviolet rays. You can't see x-rays. You can't see radio waves. We see visible light, which is a very minimal part of the whole entire spectrum. But if you take a empty room, and you filled it up with bowling balls to the ceiling, you would not be able to walk through. But an ant could. A microbe wouldn't even realize the, base, the bowling balls are there. So it's, when you talk about mass, mass only affects those where your dot matrix is bigger than the other dot matrix you're trying to get through. It's one of the reasons why you can have what looks like energy fall through mass and flow through mass. That's why you can hear sounds through walls. That's why when you open your shades 
and you look through the window, light can come through that window. You have to think in a different level. And when they talk about us being light beings, they're trying to explain what's in your head because that's where the universe is. You are looking within. They even say that in the Bible several times. Look within yourself. I mean, I'm going to show you a couple of things. We all know if you've ever seen, if you've gone to a doctor or you look up the medical field industry, what do they show? They show almost like a rod with wings and you see this spiraling little doodad. Well, that's your DNA. And the wings, you know, they're always talking about angels. Well, if you look, if you ever look at the top of your brain where they show the pineal gland, if you ever see a top image, you're going to see two things on, two white things on either side. The Pegasus, the white horse, by the way, because it's going to be, there's going to be a part that's shaped like a uh, horse's foot. But those are the wings. They will look like wings spread apart. It's your DNA. It's like I've said in other videos. It's Jacob's Ladder. Climbing up the spiral staircase. So when I talk about light in different dimensions, it's not magic. It's not superstition. It's not voodoo. It's just a matter of the vibration of energy. So like I was saying before, the more solid something is, the lower the vibration. So you'll have solid, like earthly things, like stones, things like that. You'll have, next is um, water. Then you'll have air. Then you'll have the ether. So the higher up you go, the higher your vibration, which is nothing more than energy condensed. Like, for example, if you've, ever, if you've ever turned on a fluorescent light and you hear a hum, it's just the sound is nothing more than vibration. What I am saying is nothing more than a vibration. That's why when people talk about, oh, you know, this spell and spellings and curse and cursive and all that other stuff, we're affected by vibration. I mean, put your, put somebody put their nails to a chalkboard and start scratching and watch people cringe. Why do you think you even see it in Ferguson where they have those trucks with that big thing that uh, emanates all this loud noise? It can affect you physically because it disrupts your pattern. That's what it's all about. So if you ever notice, like people like myself who are starting to get to these higher levels, and it's not meant to be egotistical or arrogant, just that's a fact. I mean, I've been researching, I've become more enlightened. So the consciousness rises. In other words, you become more ether-like. But you notice like the people like the um, Bill Donahue's of the world, the Greg Braden's of the world, and if you don't know them, look them up. They're very loving, very happy, very caring. They don't get very angry. At least they don't show it. And I, the one thing that I can see that people have noticed, especially in my channel, if you've been watching me for a while, I'm losing the anger. Now, it's not always easy. There's times like I'll get angry, but I don't harp on it anymore. It doesn't affect me the same way. And I've definitely lost the fear. And you'll notice the people that talk about the higher vibrations, they tend to be very calm, very soothing, very all over there. And you notice the people that are still stuck in religion are very lower dimensional. In other words, they're more solid and they tend to be more angry more judgmental, more stubborn, which if you think about it, doesn't that go against what religion is supposed to be about? Loving, caring, being good to one another. And yet you see the average person, if you challenge their belief, their programming is exposed because they become very defensive. They become very angry. They become very judgmental. That is why people need to see, like when I talk about how things are hidden in plain sight. And there are messages in movies and music. And I'm going to give you just two quick examples. If you ever see the movie Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, the scene where... 
Yoda is trying to teach Luke about the Force, his training. And he's trying to get um, Luke to get his X-Wing out of the, the pond or the swamp that it crashed in when he got there. And he's trying to use the Force, and he's trying so hard to think about making it happen. And he can't make it rise out of the water. And he goes to Yoda and basically says, you know, it's too big. I can't do it. And Yoda is telling him, basically, size does not matter because it's all in your head. And then he turns around and says to uh, Luke, and be very careful. You can watch this. Be very, pay attention to what he's saying because it'll back up what I've been talking about. When he's talking to Luke as he's sitting down on the ground all frustrated that he couldn't get the X-Wing out of the swamp, he says to him, you must unlearn what you have learned. In other words, all the things we've learned in our lives are lies and programs. So you have to learn all over again. And that is frustrating. Just imagine you spent 12 years of high school and then you found out when you graduated, you had to start all over again. You'd be very frustrated, wouldn't you? So I can understand where people get angry because it's easier just to continue with your programming because you don't have to learn anything new. It's harder and a challenge to start over again. But once you get past that point, you're so grateful you did it. There's another thing he says, because Luke complains that it's too, too heavy. And he says, judge me by my size, do you? And then he grabs him by the shoulder and he says, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. In other words, he's saying that the body is just a shell for our soul, our life force, our energy, our, our light. Luminous beings are we, made of light. And then he goes and shows that he can lift up the X-Wing by himself because size didn't matter. So little tiny old 900-year-old Yoda lifted up what seemed to be something that was impossible. And when he did it, Luke says to him, I don't believe it. And Yoda turns it around and says, well, that's why you fail. Because what he's telling you is, it's not based on a belief system. And because of the fact that Luke, who was raised to be a certain way and had a certain belief system, could not comprehend that size is irrelevant when it comes to everything being luminous of light. It's the illusion. It's nothing more than energy condensed. But it's still light. Light as a feather. And because Luke didn't believe it, he failed. Because belief is irrelevant. And that's one of the reasons why the most important thing in our bodies and the survival of this planet is water. Because if you think about it, water is the only element that we know of that can be solid, liquid, and gas. There is no other element that can do all three. Is it any wonder why our bodies are made of water and why planets need water to survive? So there's another movie I want you to think about, and I talked about that in my other video about Iron Man 3. There's another hidden in plain sight moment. Now, I showed about the part where they show supposedly inside um, Miss Potts, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow's character's brain, and by accident, he presses a button and he shows the universe. And they try and make a joke out of it and say, oh, yeah, you know, sorry, wrong image. Well, where would that wrong image come from if he attached an electrode to her brain and registered what was inside it? So that was a nice little, here, here's an aha moment. But there's another part in that movie that will let you show, like the whole Ferguson thing, how I've been talking about how it's an illusion, false flag, and how these things are stories made by crisis actors and people don't want to believe it. Well, here's a wonderful message in Iron Man 3 that you might not have noticed. You know the uh, the guy that plays the Mandarin in the movie? And by the way, if you haven't seen it, you know, spoil alerts for these things. Um, the Mandarin is supposed to be a terrorist organization, a guy that runs a terrorist organization. And if you look at the way they purposely dressed him, 
he looks incredibly similar to Osama bin Laden. Now, the reason I can say that is if you know anything about comics, and I used to collect comics, so it shows the synchronicity of everything, how, you know, all things come full circle and there's, there's no mistakes and you have certain things in your life because eventually they'll, they'll come into play. Well, I used to be one of those comic book geeks as a kid. The Mandarin was not from the Middle East. He was from Asia. He was Oriental. So they changed the Mandarin into a terrorist organization leader that looked eerily similar to Osama bin Laden. And what did they find out about the person who was showing his image on camera, scaring people, threatening to shoot and kill people and be a terrorist? Well, when Iron Man goes into his lair, they find out what? They found out that he was just an actor being told to play a role. On the television, where you watch television programming, it's in the words, hidden in plain sight. And I think people are on a level now, they're seeing it more and more. We're seeing things like the, the video I made about the music. They're in movies too. And here, those are two just examples of millions. Well, maybe not millions, but... Hundreds, if not thousands, of movies, music, all these things where they're giving you this information that is hidden in plain sight. Because if you know anything about the Illuminati or the people in control, they are like the Wizard of Oz. They're the man behind the curtain. And they profit and benefit off of us being ignorant and scared. And what people have to understand is they cannot force us to do anything. It has to be through our consent. And that's why people like myself and others who speak about this that know to rise above the fear, we're not getting murdered because they can't touch us, but they can pretend to kill someone else and put it on the television screen because it's all about agenda. I mean, I'll give you a prime example. The whole Ferguson thing. Everybody's marching about uh, Mike Brown, who no one knows anything about. I had a person say they claimed to be their friend, but they didn't want to give any proof or evidence of that. What a surprise. But uh, anybody remember a couple of days after this, one another person got killed, the guy with the butter knife? Who's rallying for him? How many people are saying that that's unfair? He got gunned down by three or four cops. He had a butter knife. He was mentally unstable. But you notice they're hammering in this one particular person. What about all the other people that die throughout the world? Where are the riots and picket signs for them? It's an agenda. It's a program. It's making you believe what's going on. That's why when you go to court, you're playing a game. Because where else can you find a court? How about on basketball courts or tennis courts? They're trying to tell you it's a game. That's why they get, they the, most of the laws are either acts or codes. Well, what is an act? Well, you can find an act in a play, can't you? What's a code? Well... If you were ever in the military and you had to decode a message, in other words, it's not real. But they have to get you to consent. It's like that vampire, mo um, vampire zombie video I made. A vampire, according to legend, who looks very aristocratic, by the way, symbolism for the elite, they cannot just come into your house and murder you. They have to have permission. So... If somebody knocked on your door and said, hi, I'm a vampire. If you let me in, I'm going to kill you. Can I come in? Of course you're going to say no. You'd be pretty stupid unless you had a suicide wish. But if they pretend to be, for example, a police officer and say, you know, we just got a phone call saying somebody's in your house. Can I come into your house and inspect it for your safety? You'll be like, oh, sure. Come on in. And guess what? You've given him the permission to come in. He can kill you. Symbolism. Something people really have to check into. So when it comes to this whole scheme, this whole big picture, this whole thing that most people will say is crazy because they're so programmed that they just will not listen, is it's all based on consent. And they will do everything to trick you into their consent. And a lot of it is through fear and through punishment.
and they keep you in that lower vibration. They keep you pressed down, feeling weighted. Why do you think when people are stressed out, they feel so heavy? They feel like the world is against them. They're always afraid. And when you're more spiritual and you get gain more knowledge, illuminated, so to speak, you become lighter. It's like, oh, the weight of the world is off my shoulders. It's trying to tell you to reach a higher vibration because we're all nothing more than energy. And we experience, for some reason, we came here to experience what it's like to be a three-dimensional solid being. Solid. Because light cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed. That's why, for example, if you've ever had anything on a computer and you delete it, well, guess what? Can't you retrieve it? The NSA has all of your information that you've ever deleted. Every picture, every video, every program that you've ever had, they have access to it, even if you deleted it. Why? Because energy does not, cannot be destroyed. It's like watching TV. The signal gets sent out. It may disperse as it goes. But when you watched, when you watched a program, like for example, one of the first aired television shows was the 1938 Olympics with, with Hitler, by the way, the person that won, what, that was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Image got sent out to space and it's been traveling ever since. Now, as it goes, it pro it's probably spreads out and eventually it gets to the point where you'll have no idea what it is and it's just nothing but static and noise. But when you, when the people were watching that live as it was going on, it didn't just disappear once you saw the image. It can, energy cannot be destroyed. That's why we don't come from nothing. That's impossible. How can there be nothing and then all of a sudden something come from it? Think of it logically. So the whole thing of people saying, oh, when you die, you, you turn into nothingness. Makes no logical sense because energy, and we are energy because that's why we're made of electrons, electric electron we're made of atoms you know adam and eve were made of atoms just one atom Ugh. there's so much to talk about with this i just want people to understand that when you lose the fear and you take back control of your life because you are superman you are god because you're part of the single experience and God is nothing more than a single singular consciousness. However that came into existence, or if it's always been there, I, I mean, obviously I can't answer that question. But if you think about traveling the speed of light, and I've said this before in other videos, but like I said, if you have a track that's a mile long, and you have a vehicle that can travel the speed of light, that means in the span of one second, it will have traveled 186,400 times around that one mile tra long track. And that will go so fast, it looks like that car is everywhere. So if you think about it from the whole God point of view, the whole singular consciousness, the whole all from one and one from all, well, what if God is that singular consciousness traveling? I mean, because God is light, energy, ether, it's experiencing an infinite universe through the eyes of whatever that he decided to, or she decided, or it decided to create. And it's traveling at the speed of light so fast it looks like it's everywhere. And you're nothing more than just an experience of the singular consciousness. I mean, look at another movie like The Dark Crystal. The Dark Crystal talks about how ultimately a singular entity, when the crystal was shattered and the shard was released they became two separate beings the mystics and the uh what were the bad guys names well the bad guys i forget their names but you had the bad guys that look kind of like bird buzzard creatures and you had the mystics that kind of looked like a cross between a horse and camel but they were the good ones they were the bad ones in other words the yin and yang the good and evil that's why if you add an o to god it's good and you take away the d from devil it's evil good versus evil Yin and yang, light and dark, negative and positive. That's what they're trying to tell you that the world is. That the world is always going to be more slightly positive than negative. Because you'll have positive, negative, and in the center is neutral. Well, neutral is not negative, so it would be actually more positive than negative. 
because neutral is not negative. But in the Dark Crystal, and you see in the end where when the hero puts the shard back into the crystal, the two entities merge into one. And they become luminous beings. They become light. And that's why you see the image of everything in that castle collapsing. And it's all this glowing white crystal. Light, luminous energy. And they, and they were calm again. And they were whole again. In other words, going back. So for some reason, as us being conscious light, and if you research the double slit experiment, you'll realize there are several experiments where they've proven that light has a consciousness. It makes decisions. And basically, in the double slit experiment, when you shoot a particle of light through a single hole, it'll go through and hit the other side and just make a mark exactly where it is. It's like, for example, if you had a piece of paper, then a hole, and then over this way, you're shooting a BB gun through that hole. Well, every time it's going to hit dead center of where you aimed it. Particle of light did the same thing. Well, here's what they found when they added two holes and they aimed it at one. Well, if you had a BB gun and you shot it, there are two holes and you shot it at one, it would keep going in the direction you aimed it. Well, when it came to a light particle, when there was a choice, it converted itself from a particle to a wave pattern and went through both holes. So just imagine if you had a BB gun and you shot a BB through one of the two holes and it split and went into both. And then instead of it being in a certain spot where it was predetermined in the single hole, the marks on that ba back end of where that um, electric light hit was scattered randomly. In other words, you couldn't pinpoint where it was going. And when they converted it back to the single hole and shot it, it did it again. So the very fact that they did this experiment proved that light is consciousness. It can make decisions. Why do you think we feel? Why do you think we hear? Touch. When I'm touching here, I'm not feeling it here. It's registering an electrical impulse to my brain, which processes that information. When you see things, they're not outside, they're inside. It's just a registered image in your brain that you're projecting outward. It's the illusion. It's the illusion they don't want you to know about because then you cannot be controlled and you will not volunteer your servitude. And then they can control you. And they'll scare you to death. They'll tell you, oh, you're going to go and ha go to hell, or there's going to be World War III, or there's going to be another crime, another person's going to die. It's just an act. And those of you that have that higher level, or those of you who use your heart and your logic to process this information, will understand that. Those in the lower vibration will automatically dismiss it. And the only person you hurt is yourself. And that's why you see people in the lower vibration tend to be very angry, very judgmental. And you have to rise above. Well, you don't have to. It's a choice. And I just want people to know things are not the way they seem. I mean, remember the chart yesterday where I was showing you the single cell and how it multiplies? Well, when it splits in two, you get this image this right here i think it's it's the vesica pisces that's a symbol for the feminine and you will see images like this all over the world and that's why when you see this the oscillus or obsolist or forget what it's called and you'll see this in government you'll see this all over in uh, the Roman times, because they stole it from the Egyptians. That's the male symbol. That's why you'll notice, like in the Vatican, you'll have that center of the Vatican that looks like a whole, like a, the whole round part with the obelisk in the middle. They're talking about the penis into the vagina. Symbolism. So every time you see, like the Washington Monument, it's a big phallus. That's the symbolism behind it. And you'll see 
It is in the center of a vesica Pisces. The explosion of the star. Young stars. That's what we all start out as. Young stars or youngsters. And it's all in the names. I mean, why do you think, for example, like I was talking about, and somebody mentioned it, so thank you, the whole Isis, sun god of Ra, or Horus, he has several different names, and the L stands for El, Elohim, Israel, Isis, Ra, and Elohim, Israel. That's what Israel is all about. Is it any wonder why there is a Middle East terrorist organization called just happens to coincidentally enough be called Isis. Again, going back to the Egyptian symbolism. It's getting to the point where it's so clear for some. For those in the lower vibration, you're going to laugh at this. You probably shut this off a long time ago, thumbed it down, changed the channel, unsubscribed. You're going to get stuck that way because you're choosing to be controlled. And they love you for that because it is ultimately a choice. And they can do whatever they want, but they can't touch you unless you allow them to. Because you're under their control when you give your consent. And sometimes your consent is through your silence. That's why the people that speak up and talk about love and peace, not getting murdered, it's the people that they can create a whole screenplay and say, look, this is what's going to happen to you if you don't follow our rules. Just another actor. And they try and tell you that all the time. Watch the movie Iron Man 3. And watch how eerily similar the, the guy who plays the Mandarin looks like Osama bin Laden. And how you find out, ultimately, that he wasn't really a terrorist like they showed on the news. He was just an actor playing a part. And these disgusting people get paid to mislead good people because it ultimately makes you comply or consent through your silence and then they can do whatever they want to you and your children and your family and your friends and for some reason we come to this planet and most people say why are we here this is my conclusion. Since we are made of light, and light is eternal, and it's there forever, and it cannot be destroyed, when you are in an ether state, there are certain things you can't have. Well, you can't feel love, can't feel pain. Those are physical things. That's a quote-unquote physical, lower-dimensional realm. Well, what if we come here to, exp to be able to see what those things feel like? Because when you're ether, like for example, a ghost, as people like to call it, you know, spiritual, you can't touch anything. You can't hug something. You can't have an animal that you rescue, that you love, that you hold in your arms. You can't have a, a, the love of your life with an embrace. You can't experience what it's like to lose something you cared about and feel that emotion. Because that's all it is. When you lose somebody you love, it doesn't physically damage you, but yet the emotion feels so real. Look what it does to people. I mean, look what happened with Robin Williams, supposedly. If you look at it just from a story point of view, that he got so depressed, those feelings overwhelmed him so much that he ended his own life, provided that's the story that really occurred. So it can affect you so physically. Why do you think people turned to drugs and alcohol? Or they go to prostitutes so they can feel better. Because the illusion is so strong, you believe it. And like they say in the movie The Matrix, one of the biggest movies to wake up people in the world, is when uh, Neo first gets transformed into the first program where they're in that white room and there's nothing but a couch and a television. And he goes and says to... Um, shoot... What's his name? Not Neo, but the other guy. He goes to the other guy and um, says, this isn't real. And they go, well, what is real? How do you define real? Watch that part again. 
Now they're talking about it's nothing more than electrical images in your brain. So what's the difference between your dream world and the real world? So when we all die, our bodies turn to dust. You know, like they say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's partially right. But our energy, our being, our essence, our soul lives on forever. And somebody, I forget where I read this one time, and I thought this was a total brain mind screw, so to speak. Where what if, you know how everybody says that um, when you die, you see this light? And somebody made up a thing, and I thought this was the coolest, funniest thing that makes you kind of think for a second. What if when you're about to die, that light you see is actually you being reborn coming out of your mother's womb? Because you know how they say reincarnation, how you keep wanting to come back because you're, you're here to learn something or experience something? Because maybe there are people, illuminated ones, that love this dimension, this, this energy field so much that they don't want to leave it. Because they love the, the fact that they can control things and have all the power, all the glory, all the fame, all the women. And they just love that lower vibration so much that they'll do anything to keep it as long as they can. Maybe that's why we keep coming back, because we just fall so much in love with the fact that we can physically touch things, that we can experience these emotions, do things that we can't do as the all eternal. And yet we all separate from one another. It's something to think about. It's amazing. And that's it makes the experience of death so much less fearful. Because you're just, it's like having a car. When you're inside the car, you're not the car. You can always walk out. So if you get into a car accident, and I hope you never do, and the car is destroyed and you're able to walk out, you continue on. Our bodies are just that. It's, it's our vehicle to be able to hold energy, our soul, our being, our essence. So we can experience this physical realm. Now I know there's going to be people that are going to call this crazy. There's going to be people that say, oh, Chris has lost it. I'm not worried about their judgments anymore. If they want to stay in a lower vibration where they're easily controlled, that's their choice. And if they want to be mad at somebody that's trying to send them love and experience and try and get them to rise above and get out of their control, if they want to hate me for that, good for them. See how that works out for them. To those who have the chance to experience this and listen to it and feel it in your heart, and if it makes sense to you and it helps you become a better person and lose the fear, then I fail to see how it's a bad thing. If you want to live in fear, it's all around you. Everything is a choice, but there's always a consequence for the choices that you make, even if you don't see them right away. And the more I experience the fact that we are all God and we all have this ability to process information differently and we can rise above and become a higher form of vibration. That's why you see, if you ever read about the chakra, all the different spectrums of light in your spinal cord, there are different points in your spinal cord and they all emit different levels of vibration which has to do with color, because if you've ever seen a rainbow, rainbow is nothing more than division of different spectrums of light. So if you ever are fascinated by a certain color, look at what that color represents in the energy spectrum. And you'd be amazed at how similar it's going to look at your deficiencies, the things you need. Red is the one of the lower vibrations. Fuchsia, purple, pink kind of colors are some of the highest. White is the absolute highest. That's why you always see when they say when you die, you see a white light. So I'm going to leave this video here. Check out the Iron Man movie. See that for yourself. There's plenty of other movies out there. I can't point out every single one. But you can if you want to leave them in the comments. It's not coincidence. You're just meant to think that. That's what hidden in plain sight is all about. It's putting the stuff right out in front of you. Because like I was saying earlier, and like I said, I always go off track. Illuminati have a code of ethics, which I always find ironic. For them to be able to control the world, they first have to tell people what they're doing. 
Now, they've become very smart at it because if you put things in codes and messages and you don't tell people what they are, that doesn't mean they didn't tell you. It just means you couldn't understand it. So technically, they did their thing. They did warn people. But they'll put it in movies and music and all that other stuff because he'll say, oh, oh, this guy's crazy. Why is he quoting Star Wars? It's just a movie. Calm down, dude. No, it's not just a movie. There's messages. You just don't understand them, so you don't hear them. Just like in war, when somebody has a coded message, you can have every single code from the enemy. But if you don't know how to read it, it's meaningless. It holds no value. It's like looking at Egyptian symbols. If you don't know what they mean, then it doesn't matter what they say. So, for example, if you're in your house and all of a sudden you're in, let's say you're in the front room and the back room somehow gets caught on fire and somebody walking along sees the smoke and they go to warn you and they bang on your door and you open the door and an old Chinese woman who speaks nothing but Chinese is trying to tell you in her language of Chinese that your house is on fire, you need to get out. And you're sitting there, oh, I don't understand you. And you slam the door in her face. Does that mean she didn't warn you? It just means you didn't hear it. And if you leave, if you, if you stay in that in that house and decide, ah, oh, I don't know what the hell that was, I'm just going to bed, and you go to sleep, that fire can consume and kill you. So the whole code of ethics is that the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, how funny, it's all about illumination. You know, I saw the light. I once was blind. I Now I see. My sun gazing is they have to tell you what they're about to do. So they just put it in codes and they put it in stories and they make it seem like a scary thing, but they still told you. You just don't believe it because for some reason you think your belief matters. Belief is irrelevant to truth. I said it thousands of times. You could you could be on a train track, and a train is coming to hit you, and you could sit there the whole. Yes. Does. Meanwhile, they don't understand that since everything is made of electricity, it's 
There is no such thing as illness. You just believe it to be true, so you manifest what you believe. Why do you think when I started Sunday using, I don't get sick anymore? Yeah, I might have a breathing problem every now and then. People say, you know, I notice you wheeze every now and then, but I don't get sick anymore. It's not like all of a sudden it, it, it stops everything. But then again, that's just a belief system. You, manage, you create what you believe. Since the world is made of electricity and magnetism, you attract what you, you give. You know, you get what you give. You ever wonder why people, you always see they're in very bad relationships and every person they made this. It's the same thing over and over again. You're not learning. So you keep getting it sent back to you. So obviously you must want it because even though you're playing it, you're still putting yourself in that situation because after all, isn't it a choice? You can't walk away. You can't say no. And you make excuses. I did that for the longest time. That doesn't mean because of my belief system. I mean, I can't just get up and fly because I don't believe that's possible. If I did, I'd be able to. I'd do it. This is an experience. You can experience it any way you want. If you want to experience life as being bitter and angry and judgmental and hateful and all that other fun stuff, that's your choice. But that's a weird way to experience life. But if you came here to experience what that feels like, congratulations. So instead of getting angry and wanting to fight these people, get mad at them, now I just dismiss it. It's like, okay, you hate me? It's your choice. You don't like what I'm saying? Congratulations. Want to thumb down my video? Enjoy. It doesn't change who I am unless I decide. It's the same thing with you. Fear is a choice. They use fear because it's the easiest way to control you. Because if you think a terrorist is going to come at you any moment or you're going to be shot by the government, you're going to listen to whatever rules they enforce on you, even if you think they're unfair. And even with religion, even though they don't practice what they preach, they tell you, well, if you don't believe us, you're going to go to hell. Well, you're going to discipline yourself. In other words, you're not going to eliminate the problem. Hopefully you've learned something today. If you appreciate that, I want you to share my video. Like it, favorite, post it on your social networks, help get this information out. Because this is the stuff they'll never want you to learn. And I'm not here to tell you how to think, because you're here for your own experience. If you want to experience doubt and non-belief or extra belief, that's your choice. If you want to hatred or loving or kindness, that's fine. I've discovered my purpose of why I'm here. I'm here to teach. For some reason, I need to experience what that's like to help people. For whatever reason, it's my calling. It's very peaceful when you find your calling, you know your purpose, and understand why you're here. It's a tremendous way off your shoulders. And it doesn't mean that life is now perfect. Life is always a test because that's what this world is all about. Experience it any way you want. Just realize it's just more than experience. The problem is, when we decide to come here, there's a choice. It's everyone's choice. Nothing is random. We forget why or where we came from. And that's why, like, when we watched the movie Dark Crystal, when it was split apart, they didn't remember it after a while. You forget. But when they joined together, they understood everything going back to one. So if you want to believe that there's going to be the forces of apocalypse coming out of the sky to judge you and kill you, that's fine. Believe that. If that makes you happy, believe it. If you want to live in fear, enjoy it. But don't complain about it. Don't be upset about it because it's your choice. It's like, for example, if I punched myself in the head repeatedly, I could stop at any moment. But if I just sit there and say, wow, this is uncomfortable and this hurts and I can't believe the pain that I'm experiencing. Woe is me. This is so sad and this is unfair. All I have to do is just stop. It's like anything in life. We all love to complain, but we are ultimately responsible for what's going on in the world. If you want to turn on the TV and believe everything that's going on, that's your choice. But question why they're hiding information. Like in the whole Ferguson thing. Why they're not showing the video and audio tape from the police vehicle. Why Mike Brown's body was not picked up by an ambulance and was put in the back seat of a police car. 
or a, a SUV, whatever it was, why the dispatcher said that they learned the information from the media while the Ferguson police never knew anything about it. Is that protocol for a cop? Is to first have the media report it? How would the media even know about it? Unless it was planned. Mike Brown could have been an innocent person that was shot. Or he could have been an actor that pretended to be shot. A lot of actors fake deaths in movies. Now, I don't know either way because I wasn't there. That doesn't mean there isn't a possibility. As crazy as somebody's going to say that is. Everything is choice. It's a possibility. It's perception. If you have a tube, let's say like a um, tube at the, the cardboard of a um, paper towel. If you look at it head on and shine a light, let's say you fill it so it's solid. You shine a light to that wall, you're going to see an image of a circle. Because you're putting the light in a perspective of where the image is of the circle, and that's all it sees. Well, if you elongate it and put the light that way, well, guess what? The image now is a rectangle. So everything is based on perception. Whether you believe it or not. So I said well, I'm going to end it before, and as usual, I go into my rants. This is a long video, but if you've learned something from it, then it was worth it. You were brought here because you chose to be here, subconsciously or consciously. You made that decision. Sometimes you just have to understand it's about the understanding of why. You will never see movies and music ever again the same way after things like this. Because you'll pay more attention. You'll never be controlled the same way. Because you'll understand why. You'll never be afraid as you once were. Because you understand it's a choice. And you'll second guess your belief systems because they're irrelevant to truth. Belief doesn't matter. Only if you make it matter. And again, isn't that a choice? Convince me that oxygen is something you don't believe in. Does that mean it no longer exists and you're not breathing it? Can't see it, can't touch it, can't taste it. You're hearing my words, it's nothing more than vibration, which is energy condensed why the different levels of vibration in words put a spell on you. It's not magic or voodoo or superstition. It's just simple wave patterns of energy. Start studying this stuff. Quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Listen to people like Greg, Greg Brayton. Bill, Bill Donahue from Hidden Meetings. Because there are two Bill Donahues, I found out. And uh, have yourself a great day. Let's hear your comments. And so far, the comments I've gotten, gotten on my videos have been of a higher level. I don't let the few bad apples spoil the tree anymore. Because when you're starving, do you really care if 99% of the apples are dead? If you have at least one apple that keeps you alive? Have a great day. Peace.